Hi, Terry Fairchild, Registered Corporate Coach and Show of Hands. Who's been to a meeting that was not very well run? All right, let's think, show of hands. Who's been to a virtual meeting that has not been well run? Yeah, probably all of us, even though I can't see your hands there, all of us have probably had that situation where we're like, wow, this is not going well. And so that's the topic of today's video, is how can you do a better job in those meetings? Because um, this week I actually was supposed to be in San Antonio, Texas, uh, but um, of course couldn't travel. And so they held the conference virtually. And I really will um, have to give a hats off to Wiley for actually making that effort to um, relay the information that we would normally get at our industry conference. And then while it wasn't the same, because you know we didn't have the happy hours and the real connection, um, it still was an effort. And I really give them credit for that. And the reason that that's important is that 86% of people now have been surveyed and they said that 14% of people want just self-directed um, but 86% want a blend of instructor-led and independent learning situations and so really virtual meetings aren't going away um, in many cases they may become the new normal so it's really important that you have the skills to actually run a virtual meeting so so in this meeting I'm going to give you some of the things that I've learned personally about the world of virtual learning so number one platform now I've used about three different platforms since I started conducting virtual meetings about seven or eight years ago and the one that I really like now is zoom and the reason I like that is that the camera is really focused on the person and so when I do coaching one-on-one -on -one, I've done uh, coached people all over the United States and I really feel like I've totally gotten to know them um, and have been really able to do very very good coaching meetings with that because um, it's just like we're having a conversation it's just really natural and um, so I prefer that plus I think that the um, it's easy you know, I'm not a technical guru and I uh, have a lot of anxiety related to that technology and so I feel like Zoom has been just the easiest uh, well laid out program for me to learn. So the point is here, just get familiar with your platform so that when you go in that you can actually just really focus on the person and not get distracted by all the technical things. Uh, second point, when you use a platform, a, a really a best practice I think is sharing the screen. You know, there's a lot of platforms where you can load things in, but I think it's just as easy to share that screen. And in Zoom, there's a feature where you can click play the, through the um, microphones. So when I play a video, if I do that, it, it's just as if it's playing through their own computers in their homes. So just works great. Um, and then in terms of how do you deliver a meeting? I think one of the most important things in terms of training and how I've learned to deliver training is just really a series of steps that you want to go through. And the first is the why. You know, once you get everybody in and, you know, hopefully you've had a little dialogue, hey, how you doing? You're welcoming people when they're coming into the meetings, they're turning their cameras on. And again, if I was a leader, I think I would almost mandate that camera um, so that you could um, have that interaction. It's just so important for them to have their cameras on. So again, I would definitely um, encourage you to throw down that challenge to your people to turn their cameras on so that you can be properly relating. Welcome them in, say, hey, how you doing? You know, if they have their dogs or their kids, it's like, you know, it's desperate times to get desperate measures. So, um, you know, ask them to dress appropriately if they can. And then, you know, once you get everybody in, um, jump into the session in t terms of why. Why are we talking about this content? Um, maybe some statistics, any information. And then secondly, what? And when I'm doing training, if you're doing training or you're covering material, I really like the thought of putting one um, topic per screen or PowerPoint or whatever you know uh, program you're using, but one item with a couple of words, a couple of uh, notes and a picture, and then just talk about your slides. But again, that visual plus the um, your conversation, your dialogue, it's gonna help them that be much more memorable. So cover your points in order or steps. And then thirdly, and most importantly, is once you've covered information, it's really important to have that small group discussion. So if you can keep your groups at, you know, eight to 10 people, um, you know, I call on people. I call on people during, during the whole thing. 
like, hey, what was your reaction to uh, the information we shared? Um, how do you think we can use this today? You know, what are your thoughts? And again, um, they, you know, you might call it lazy facilitation, but it's really like just ask the question and let your people talk. Um, again, we're trying to build connections um, in the workplace through this virtual facilitation. So this is key in building engagement and accountability for people to know that they're going to have to participate on the calls and um, really give you their input. So very important. And I remember um, I was doing a meeting last week and we came, covered a topic. We watched a video. And as I went around, one of the person, I just said, you know, what'd you guys think of this? Give me your you know, thoughts. Just open it up. And one person was like, very emotional about the content and very thoughtful and you know and uh, everyone really was they all really opened up and shared a lot and it was like wow i remember leaving that meeting thinking this was the best meeting i'm so glad that we're continuing these meetings virtually because we had just as good of a meeting virtually as we could have face to face i thought it was awesome uh, so uh, call on people, get that, uh, you know, that feedback. And if you have big groups, uh, for instance, I have a group of 40 next week and I'm going to have to use the breakout rooms. And again, for me, that's a little scary. It's outside my comfort zone, but I know that in order to build that dialogue, there's no way you could do that with 40 people. So I'm going to have to break into groups of six and um, hold that conversation, have those small group dialogues in smaller groups. There is always a way to get feedback. And so you really, as the leader, you need to make sure you get that involvement. Additional ways to get that feedback is to use polls, um, chats. I saw a guy who was from Australia who's literally down under, and he was trying to build his business in the United States. He literally had to do it through webinars. And so he had people type in the chats and he's like, oh, Terry said this, oh, Bill, hey, like that comment. And so he would remember people's names, he would mention people's names. Um, and it totally kept us engaged. I thought he was just excellent at that. So definitely use your chat box and call those people's names out um, and their comments. I think the most important thing to take away from this video is that you have an opportunity right now to build a skill set and keep your people engaged. Over the past year, I've had a group that's been meeting either weekly or every other week. And so when the COVID-19 struck, struck we, you know, we canceled the meetings, but then the next week I thought, you know what, we're going to bring this on virtually. And so we have been meeting every week, once a week, virtually. And now, um, 10 weeks later, this group has caught up with the previous group. And that wouldn't be possible if we would just automatically shut down and said, oh, no more meetings. Um, we would be 10 weeks behind. And so that is key, I think, is to make sure, even if you don't like the meetings, is to make sure that you're building those connections and having meetings with your group. Uh, really will be important to uh, build morale. Right now, we're dealing with really big morale issues. And um, so it's really important to make sure that your people are feeling that connection. So if you're a leader, I would challenge you to build your virtual meeting skills. Put the meetings on the calendar, add one new thing each week, make sure that you're getting that engagement and connection, and when you do, you'll build a more engaged and a happier workforce.